Julian Brisebois and Kelly McCrimmon versus Barry Trotz. Which GM is going to finish next season a hero and which will be a zero after decisions they made this offseason with Jonathan Marcheseau and Steven Stamkos? Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Predators podcast, and thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Want to kick off this Hallelujah, y'all. It's Friday episode with a shout out to our Locked On Pred Heads. Those are our everyday listeners who tune in each weekday to talk Nashville Predators hockey with us. We appreciate your support and we love that we get to spend just a little bit of your day with you. I'm Ann Kimball. I am a writer with Penalty Box Radio and my friends, I have a partner in crime. Technically two partners in crime for those of you watching on YouTube, but I am Emma Lingen and I am the Predator site editor and reporter for the Hockey News. And my partner in crime is Minka, who for the first time in her life has decided she's camera shy right now. On today's show, Emma, Minka, and I are going to be talking about the GMs who are going to come out smelling like roses at the end of this season. Barry Trotz, of course, signing Stephen Stamkos, Jonathan Marcheseau, while Julian Bruce Bois and Kelly McCrimmon opted to let two star players walk from their franchise. We're going to talk about what each GM has said. And we're going to tell you what it would take for Barry Trotz to have those fellow GMs eating some crow at the end of the 2024-25 season. Before we dive into all of that good stuff, want to let you know today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. All right, Emma. So the Nashville Predators, of course, added you know, several big players, but I kind of want to focus on what we lovingly refer to as the geriatric additions to the roster, the hockey geriatric additions, talking about Steven Stamkos and talking about Jonathan March. So two star players for their respective teams whose GMs opted not to get it done. Looking back at last season, when Barry Trotz announced on the first day of free agency last year, hey, I've signed Ryan O'Reilly, Gustav Nyquist, and Luke Shen. I think everybody in Nashville is like, you did what now? We were getting younger. I'm sorry, you did what? But looking back at what they've accomplished, of course, Gustav Nyquist had a career season. Ryan O'Reilly had uh, the most goals and points since 2018, 2019. A lot of success here with those veterans. Do you feel like it's kind of trying to catch lightning in a bottle again, bringing in two more geriatric hockey players this season? All right. I'm going to have to call time (laughs) of death on that (laughs) phrasing right now. First it's of all, only in hockey terms, because look, the, it, it's so ridiculous to me to when we talk about this, because I'm like, I barely remember being Brady Shea's age. <laughs> Listen, Brady Shea is technically younger than me, so I'm going to need to stop with the whole geriatric right now. Yeah, um, he's younger than me by a couple months, but it's that silver fox look that has us confused. <laughs> It's true. Yes. The it, it was a little confusing at first, or maybe maybe not confusing, maybe a little jarring at first when it when Barry Trot says we want to get faster and younger. And then he goes, Hey, here's Gus Nyquist, Ryan O'Reilly, and Luke Shen. And we we're like, huh. Okay. But then we saw what those additions brought to this team, specifically O'Reilly and Nyquist. And it was like, oh, okay, Barry. All right. Um, and so then he decides to go out and get three more guys in their thirties, four, if you count, uh, Scott Wedgwood as well. Yeah. You got Philip Forsberg turning 30, got UC Soros turning 30 soon. Um, and and I think everyone's a little bit like, "Mm okay, what's, what's the plan here? And I think it's important to remember that Barry Trotz did say he wants to get younger. Right. 
But that he never said we want to get younger overnight because you know what that's called? That's called a rebuild. That is called a tear down rebuild. And he has made it very clear that is not what this team is doing right now. By bringing these these older free agents, he hasn't eliminated the possibility of getting younger. He hasn't, you know, he didn't give up any draft capital. He didn't give up any, you know, top tier prospects for this team. So all it's showing us, and and we've said this before, is that there's some really good young talent in this system. It's just NHL ready yet. And these guys come in and they can be sort of a stopgap, but almost kind of like, it's a bad, a bad word uh, for this conversation, but to grandfather, is <laughs> not as in they are grandfather others, but yeah. like, you know, to gradually usher in this new era <laughs> of youth, because when these young guys come in, they're learning, like, who would you rather learn from as a young hockey player? If you're coming up and you've got Roman Yossi, Steven Stamkos, Ryan O'Reilly, like, oh my gosh, like that, that's quite a leadership group right there, not to mention any of the other guys that we just mentioned. So it's all about, we've talked about before how Barry Trotz is all about establishing culture and that winning culture um, and how important that is. And I think that that, you know, he was able to preserve that strength in it really. And then again, not sacrifice like any of their future. So let's talk about the Julian Brisebois press conference. The media availability on July 1st went back and listened to this. And here is one of the phrases that he repeated a couple of times that jumped out at me. He kept talking about and using the phrase in their prime. For instance, Jake Gensel, a player, a star player in his prime. Um, talked about there are younger players who are coming into their prime that are going to help this team, you know, become a contender again. Look, if I'm Steven Stamkos, first of all, I'm a little insulted. (laughs) But also, you know, you look at Jake Gensel, you know, he's going to turn 30 this season as well. So you're not talking about like a 26-year-old. The other thing that he said that really jumped out at me is Julian Brisebois talked about there were financial expectations from Steven Stamkos. And we've talked about this. We talked about this a couple of times. I talked about this with Deandra Liu as well. The offer that is rumored to have been from Tampa Bay was just past the line of insulting. (laughs) It was not a deal structured to entice a player to stay there. And probably, uh, my guess is maybe intentionally, Nashville, of course, then a four-year, $8 million AAV deal for him. Steven Stamkos will be 38, 39 years old when he's done. But here is why I think it makes a difference. Nashville doesn't need Steven Stamkos to be the top scorer for the team in the last year or two of that contract. Because they have a transition plan. So their need from Steven Stamkos after four years is different than what I think Tampa Bay's is. Yeah, definitely. And I'm I'm with you on the the insulting. If that contract, I think what it was the the report or the rumor was it was eight years, three million, three million. AV. Oh, that's insulting. That's terrible. Like, come on. And, and I understand that, like, you know, ultimately that comes out to a, you know, the the total amount would be. 24 million, but you're not, you know, if you're Steven Samkos and you're, you're being realistic and saying, Hey, I'm 34 years old. I'm not playing for eight more years. Right. So I want my money now. (laughs) And I, I think that's totally fair and totally justified because it's like that whole deferred, the like deferred salary conversation that's been happening. And it's like kind of similar to what Marcia so was talking about in Vegas about like, it wasn't a traditional offer is what he kept saying. And I think it was probably something similar to this where, you know, it, it almost kind of felt like 
Brisbois and the Lightning were taking advantage of Stamkos or taking him for granted a little bit because it was like, well, he's our guy. He's not going to go anywhere, right? Like we can we can give him this right. low ball offer and he's not going to go anywhere. And he called their bluff. And I say good for him. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, Nashville's need at the end of four years looks very different than Tampa Bay's. Yep. You don't need Steven Stamkos to be the player four years from now. They need him to help develop the players. And frankly, yes. And frankly, <laughs> if you are relying on a 38 year old to be your guy, then that that's problematic in a lot of ways. So I think that it shows that there is a plan in place that, you know, again, yes, maybe if he's playing a more diminished role in year four, which you would expect he should be, people are going to be upset. Well, why is he, why are we paying him $8 million to pay, like to barely play? It's like, well, because that that's the price you pay to get him on the front end. Like, you, right. You have to pay that. It's like you're, it's so it's sometimes I feel like when people complain about term and salary and things like that, I'm like, I get it. But at the same time, you can't just, if the Predators didn't offer Stamkos four years at 8 million, someone else would. And, 100%. and so you, ha that's the price you have to pay. They could have been like, okay, we'll take two years at 8 million a year. But another team would have offered four and he would have gone to that team. So like it's it's just how, what you got to do in this business. The other thing, too, is, you know, four years from now, when you were paying him eight million dollars, the players that you are bringing up in the roster are not going to be players demanding huge contracts. You're talking about relying on younger players, on lower contracts, on kind of those initial prove it contracts. You know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about? You're talking about. Zachary LaRue, Joachim Kamel, you're talking about Matthew Wood, Tanner Mullendike. So $8 million four years from now still is not going to be this back-breaking number for where the Nashville Predators are going to be financially, the players that they're going to have on their roster. So it's all, I think, going to be okay financially. Yeah, and then, what, four years from now, you're not going to have – the Matias Ekholm dead cap, you're not going to have the Ryan Johansson dead cap. You think mm -hmm. you'd still have Matt Duchesne, but it's just like 1 million or 1.5 yes. million. Significantly um, less. Significantly less. I think they will be paying Kyle Turris forever. Um, but again, I like they're going to have less dead cap space. The cap is also going to rise between now and then. Um, so again, I'm not I'm not that worried about it. Coming up, we're going to talk about Jonathan Marchessault and what was said in the media availability around his departure from Vegas. And we're going to talk about what has to happen for Barry Trotz to come out smelling like roses with these contracts. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Look, if you have a birthday, anniversary, or you just need a really great date night plan, you can hit it out of the gift giving park with tickets from Game Time. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seats, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets for concerts, sports, theater, comedy, and more. With the Game Time app, you get to see a view from your seat, and there are no no surprise fees at checkout. Game Time also has ticket coverage on your purchase, so it's covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
All right, Emma. So we've talked a little bit about Stephen Stamkos and the deal and, and why the deal that Nashville made works for Nashville and, you know, maybe didn't work or they didn't try to make it work very hard in Tampa Bay. But let's talk about Jonathan Marcheseau, who, by the way, I'm here for because he says all the things <laughs> like I loved his media availability because Jonathan Marcheseau it was not afraid to say like, I don't think they did. I don't think they did me well. So I uh, went back and listened to Kelly McCrimmon's uh, media availability as well on July 1st, kind of talking about and explaining what happened with Jonathan Marcheseau. And it was very interesting to me because he spent a lot of time at the beginning of his presser explaining how much they were invested in re-signing Jonathan Marcheseau. So they said, hey, we talked to him before the season started. We talked to him at the All-Star break. We continued negotiating with him after the season. We had a number of meetings with his agents, tons of phone calls. We met in person twice, once at the Combine, once right around the draft. And he even went on to say that he thought there was a pathway to getting a deal done right around the draft time. But the hitch and the giddy up on this deal for Vegas was term. Jonathan Marcheseau wanted five years. And the interesting quote from McCrimmon was, the data doesn't support that, which is really interesting to me when you're talking about a player coming off of one of his best seasons. I mean, 42 goal scorer, um, not too shabby. I understand a five-year deal does make Jonathan March so significantly older when this deal wraps up, but this is another case of Five years from now, Nashville won't need him to be the star player. They're going to need him to have helped develop the star players. So do you feel like Vegas was really trying to get a deal done with him? Like, what is your takeaway on the March or so situation? Well, again, not having obviously been present for those negotiations, I would assume that it, it was probably something similar to what Stamkos uh, was deal except, you know, they were probably offering a shorter term. You know, Tampa was offering Tam uh, Stamkos longer term, but for an insulting AAB. Right. Meanwhile, Marcia, so they probably would have given him what he was asking for, but maybe like three years, I, I would say, is probably what they'd be willing to to pay. But again, you got to look at, I mean. I know a lot of people don't like Kelly McCrimmon and the Golden Knights because of how they have, yeah. you know, uh, used the salary cap situation to their advantage. But you know what? I say it's a loophole. They found it and they exploited it. If you have a problem with it, then that's on the league. <laughs> the league has like, to close the loophole. Like, like that's where that you're right. That's where it, it's at. Don't hate the player, hit the game. <laughs> <laughs> like that is exactly how I how I feel about that. So I'm like, you know what? I respect it. But ultimately, we knew the time was going to come where it would come back to bite them that like, okay, we can't keep using LTIR in perpetuity with everybody and just hope that Mark Stone keeps conveniently injuring himself, you know, <laughs> right around January every year. Um, and that eventually they were going to be well over the cap and they were going to need to do something about it. And we, we saw that coming. And this was back when I thought, and I said this, I was on record saying this, I was like, okay, Vegas is going to have a lot of free agents. They're mm -hmm. not going to be able to keep all of them. They're definitely going to throw whatever money they have at Marcia. So like they're going to throw their money at him. They'll let Stevenson go again, thought he would be good for Nashville. Um, they'll let, you know, the, they'll let anyone else go. But March so is one of those original misfits. Like he is, he's too important to that franchise. Right. They, they were gonna make it work. Um, and so again, it's not like they had a ton of money to work with. I don't have, I mean, RIP cap friendly, but wow. I, I don't have that data in front of me to look at exactly what they were working with. But if I had to make an educated guess, I would say that, they were probably given his age and given, you know, their cap situation. I'm willing to bet that they probably weren't willing to sign him for longer than three years. Um, and 
I think, again, a little insulting with everything that he's done for that organization um, to see, especially because, you know, he was going to be probably the only free agent that they were going to resign at right. that point, um, because now there's just been this mass exodus uh, from Vegas. And so I think he, uh, yeah, like you said, he says all the things and he wasn't really holding back. You could tell he was that, that was him holding back by saying probably like, yes. Frankly, I don't think they really did all they could to try to keep me. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. I was like, I like this guy. Sounds yeah. a lot like me. <laughs> um, doesn't hold back. Say the uh, things. Yeah. Say the things. It, it's fine. It's good. It's healthy. Yes. Um, we love healthy communication, but yeah, I think I, I, I mean, they probably weren't ready to hand out term um, yeah. and they don't have a lot of money to begin with. So it's so interesting to me because both GMs talked about data and mm -hmm. with McCrimmon, he was kind of talking about that five year term, like the data doesn't support that, you know, this guy when he's 38 years old is going to be productive. Well, let's talk about a couple of guys who are considered elder statesmen in this league. Sidney Crosby, almost, he's 36, going to be 37, 42 goals last season, 94 points. Alex Ovechkin, I know last season was, it was up and down, uh, almost 39. He had 31 goals, 65 points last season. Then again, there was, you could see some things happening with Ovechkin. Uh, Kopitar, Anze Kopitar, almost uh, 36, almost 37, 26 goals. Chris Letang, 37 years old, had 10 goals, 51 points. Now you can cite a gazillion more players whose stats really did take a nosedive in their, you know, mid thirties, but there are certain players, outstanding players who can continue to produce well into their 30s, like a Sidney Crosby, like an Anze Kopitar. And when you look at a Steven Stamkos, I tend to think he's more Sidney Crosby-ish than those gazillion other guys that took a nosedive in their 30s. And, and sort of the same thing with Jonathan Marcheseau. Tampa Bay wants to get better at five on five. And, and I understand that you want to get better at five on five. Now, they were the number one power play team in the regular season. That ain't nothing. And if you're the Nashville Predators, you will take the guy that scored 19 power play goals, especially after last season. Yeah, I think, you know, I don't think anyone's going to sit here and say, whether you're a fan of the Predators or anyone, I don't think you're going to sit here and say, you know what, we had enough goals at five on five, we're good, um, we don't really need any more of those. No, no one's saying that. But if you're looking at, for the Predators, what do they need more of? Oh, they needed more power play scoring. The power play was just hard to watch. watch it was hard to watch and so i think that if you get a guy and it's not like again i feel like if you boil it down to just the numbers that oversimplifies it because it's not like stamkos was absolutely invisible at five on five it's not like he didn't do right. anything it's not like he's a liability out there like i i just think <laughs> that he can you know his strength area is on the power play and that was one of the biggest weaknesses for the predators and so i think that he fills a need there and he sure as heck doesn't make him any worse at five on five so i just i again i think it's kind of a i don't know I, it's it they saw an area of need and they filled it Yes. And I think Nashville benefits from something that Tampa Bay feels like they need to go a different direction in. What is it going to take, Emma? Like, give. let's talk through worst case scenario. What's What could possibly happen where at the end of this next season or two seasons from now, what would it take for Barry Trotz to look really foolish and Bruce Bois and McCrimmon to look like they were right on cutting ties when they did. Uh, if the Predators still haven't made it out of the first round of the playoffs, probably that would that would probably be a big one. And if Vegas and Tampa do now looking at where they're both at. I don't know. I mean, 
Tampa got Jake Gensel out of it, so that's good. True. But again, I think I don't know. I I think that that getting out of the first round of the playoffs is a big one. Um, and, and you want to, but as far as the individuals go, you need those guys, the Stamkos and Marcia so specifically, to be putting up like fifty five points at least at least in a season like you want obviously want them to be putting up more than that like 60 70 in that range but um you know you don't want them to to come to nashville and then completely dry up offensively yeah yeah the other thing that i worry about and knock on wood um you don't want them to have any sort of catastrophic injury yes. that's going to take them out you don't want it that the other thing that i worry about a little bit emma what if they hate it here? Because let's be honest, um, Ryan McDonough, great guy, did you know did what he needed to do with Nashville, but his heart was always in Tampa Bay, and I'm like Nashville has to woo these guys, and, and not I mean they're professionals, they are going to do their very best, they are going to be all in, but I am like I don't want them counting the minutes till they can go back and retire from their previous team? Well, I think that at least for Marcia, so he was more outwardly uh, displeased with the way things ended in Vegas. I don't really foresee that being as much of a problem with him. Stamkos, I just think is such a consummate pro too. I just yeah, like, I don't so classy. He's so classy and I'm sure like it would be foolish to think that they're not going to have any feelings about, you know, leaving the teams that they've been with and and coming here. Like, of course, it's going to be bittersweet, I'm sure. But like, again, we know I have thoughts about Ryan McDonough during his time here, but I think that you need to go into it with a healthy attitude and you know what? You're you're a grown up and you need to put on your big boy pants and be like, OK, these are the cards I've been dealt. Maybe they're not the cards that I wanted, but we're going to make the most of this. And again, you could have been dealt way worse cards. They, they could have sure. could have been like, hey, have fun in Columbus or <laughs> San Jose or like. That's I don't right. know. Like, at least you're on a team that is a playoff team. Like, my mm -hmm. goodness. I also really do think Nashville is going to woo them. Yeah. I, I think they are both going to find this as a fan base 100% in on having them in gold. And, and I think that's going to be great. But Well, and I don't know that the fan base was really the issue in either Vegas or Tampa. Absolutely I think not. The fan, the fan base, base loved them. Yeah. And so I think you know, any, any lingering feelings they may have towards management. I mean, I will say I have talked to a lot of people around the hockey world players specifically. Um, no one has ever had a negative thing to say about Barry Trotz as a person, as a coach, as now a GM, like, Guys around the league want to come play for this guy and, and they, you know, they really respect him. And so I, again, I feel like he's going to always try to do right by these players and, and, you know, they'll want to go out and perform for him too. Coming up, Emma and I are going to wrap up this week's episodes with our big Friday feelings, y'all. If you love talking Nashville Predators hockey as much as Emma and I do, if you enjoy this podcast, we want to invite you to join our Locked on Predators Insider Program via subtext. It's an opportunity for you to interact with Emma and I. Ask us your questions. Tell us what you want to talk about. Give us your opinions on the team. You are also going to get bonus content from Emma and I. Some of it you can't unsee, but you're welcome. We're going to give you in-game analysis during the season. We're also available to answer your questions. So if you would like an opportunity to chat more about Nashville Predators hockey, take a look at our Insiders program. You can find information about it on the link in our description or in our bio. 
All right, Emma, we are going to wrap up our Friday episode with some big Friday feelings. And I'm just going to kick it off by saying, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. <laughs> I'm really not, y'all. I feel so much older than 22. <laughs> Come on. This is this is your time, man, because we know I don't have much to say on this topic. But this is you. My big Friday feelings are excitement and joy because Roman Yossi, y'all, saw Taylor Swift in Zurich uh, with former Predator Nino Nito Ryder, who we love. Uh, but yes, I have to tell you, like, I was so jazzed about this. And also, if I'm being honest, Emma, a little surprised. Now, I understand most of the time when men go to see Taylor Swift, it's because their wives want to go see Taylor Swift. But I also know that men can get out of doing things like that. So for me, I'm super jazzed to A, know that Roman Yossi listens to Taylor Swift and uh, to talk to him about it. I have a million questions, Roman, a million questions about this experience. Uh, I want to know where does it rank in all of his concert experiences? Give it to me straight. What was your favorite song? Um, what did you like best about the performance? Did you see Travis Kelsey? Did you guys hang out? Is that what happens between athletes at Taylor Swift concerts? So many things. And it's weird. I get that it's weird that I'm this excited about it because I am not the Taylor Swift generation. But my daughter-in-law totally got me hooked on Taylor Swift. And so now, like, friend, way over-invested in this. Way over-invested. Meanwhile, I am of the Taylor Swift generation and have somehow escaped the craze entirely. Yeah. Um, not, but I do still have a big Friday feeling okay. related to Predators players offseason uh, endeavors. Share. We were told at the end of season media availability that UC Saros and Pekka Rene were going to Wimbledon together. Where are the pictures? 100%. Where are they? Where are they? I need to know. That's also, my big feeling. Ellie Tolvenin. This will bring out another feeling in you. Uh, Ellie Tolvenin was supposed to be joining them at Wimbledon. I'm sure. I'm sure. He and, he and Juice are very, very close. Yeah. So. And here's my thing. Not going to lie. I was watching, my husband was a tennis coach and, and loves tennis, played collegiate and all this stuff. So we are, we're big tennis people. Um, so we were watching Wimbledon and they had mentioned the particular player that they were juice had said, this is the player I'm most excited to see. And so I was watching his matches, scanning the crowd because let's be real. If you were Pecorine and you see Saros, you gotta be paying for the good tickets down by court. Well, where plus, were they? Even if you're not, I feel like Pekka is so tall. You'd be able to see him no matter where he's sitting. It's true. I That's will say true. Pekka was here at dev camp last week, but he's done now. So like where you got to be at, at Wimbledon. I, I'll be totally honest. I don't know the exact dates of like beginning and ending for, for Wimbledon, but I'm like, you got to be over there right now. Like it's interesting because Wimbledon was going on during dev camp. I wonder if Pekka had to back out. Well, but it was also going on this week. Oh, that's true. He could have so, flown over and met up with them. What's going on, guys? I need the pictures. We'd like some pictures. Yeah. Some of us see. some of us don't get to, you know, have cool summer vacations and we need to live vicariously. So yeah. We're just asking for some Instagram. Yeah. It's not, I mean, we got love. to see Roman Yossi singing the man. I know. Maybe but, I'll ask, I'll ask Mina, Juice's wife. Uh, I'm sure she'll give me the, the details. Yeah, yeah. Did it happen? Did they have good seats? These are the things we want to know, y'all. Yes. Those are our big Friday feelings, our off-season big Friday feelings. Uh, would love to know what your big Friday feelings are. Tell us what you are feeling strongly about when it comes to the Nashville Predators, positive or negative. We'd love to know. Leave a comment on our YouTube video. You can also tweet us your big Friday feeling at LO underscore predator. Before we sign off for the week, though, Emma, let everyone know where they can find you and where they can find your work. Social media at Emma underscore Lingen and online at the Hockey News.
And you can find me on social media at Ann K underscore Mama on Ice. You can find my work at Penalty Box Radio. That is going to do it for this week's episodes of the Locked On Predators podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We're going to be back on Monday with an all new episode. We'll see you then.